What's happening, fam? LAR movement still moving. Subscribe or die trying. Oh, you see the thumbnail. Some of us don't have time to grieve. Um, I was watching I Am Athlete and um, Chad Johnson, a a.k.a. Ocho Cinco, uh, kind of talked about his mother passing a few weeks back. And, you know, his mental health. And they talked about Vincent Jackson. Um, but they've all, they also talked about the idea of men not being able to... Um, actually grieve because on one end you you could say it's because you 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 socialize as a man from a boy from a boy to manhood to suck it up don't cry be a man about it but on the other end if you're a responsible man you still have responsibility so you can't grieve because your family is still dependent on you and I started thinking about it um, that how, how profound that is because people don't realize this, but, you know, a lot of brothers, if somebody dies, we don't get, we don't necessarily get the make and cry at the funeral, cry at the wake, but then somebody needs something, somebody wants something. You know, somebody, you know, somebody that's not gonna give you time to actually process it. So you have to process your grief in, 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 in like the middle of your responsibility. So, you know, you have to grieve on your way to work, not in the house. Or you're working, you might grieve on a break, but not in the house. Um, People may come to you in a sense and say, you know, and bring their problems to you while you're going through your own grief because you're a man and you're going to have to, you know, you got to press on because you got things you got to do. So other people come to you in the middle of your grief with their time of need without even considering it. And then the other thing is, is other brothers can be like, you know, we've all gone through it, so we don't necessarily come together when somebody's going through things because we've all been in the process in the in the process of grieving somebody but still having to handle our own business. So we all understand I will be there for you. I will hug you. You call me if you need me, this, that, and the third, but we all have this life goes on understanding, not in a positive sense of, you know, um life goes on and I'm gonna miss a person, but in the sense of Life goes on and people still expect things from me. And I started to think about it and extend it to things like um, parental alienation. Like when you, you don't get a chance to grieve not seeing your kid. You just got to go to work to make sure the child support bill is paid and to, make, and to take care of yourself. You don't get a chance to grieve. And a lot of times people don't take into consideration that some of our vices or some of our um, actions are kind of releases um, our own way to, of escapism from grieving something or someone. And I'm not, you know, some things can affect and hurt other people. I'm not going to say that's right. And I'm not, and I'm not going to give other people an excuse if they're looking for an excuse. Like, yeah, that's what I'm really doing. Because if you got to say that's what you're really doing as an excuse for something, that's not what you're really doing. But there are a lot of brothers who are like, man, I need to make a moment of peace for myself. I need to make a moment of silence for myself. I need to make a moment of of fun or escapism. Or I need to drown myself in work so I don't because. If I don't, I can't, I can't get depressed because if I get depressed and if I get down and if, and if, and if I'm quote unquote, uh, if I need help or need therapy, I might, I might not be in a position in life to, to, to be able to afford taking the time to take care of me while I'm responsible to take care of other people. And, um, unfortunately for a lot of us brothers who who have responsibilities, that's the case where, you know, it's not just we die early or whatever. It's it's also 
you get cold because you know things happen and you only can grieve for a short period of time because after a while your feelings and your heart gets callous because you can't process those emotions because somebody's stepping on them because they want something from you you know um and it's unfortunate and then when people say say people are um not just cold but distant or um how can I say or you you think somebody's robotic or machine like it's not really that it's just the fact that they've never had a time to process grief and they and they can't never let their guard down I can't say never but they have to put it in a small window, five minute window here, ten minute window here, and you might be grieving somebody for years because you never had a time to actually grieve them, con you know, consecutively, and um, I, 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 it definitely resonated with me as a person because, you know, I think about like last year, so many people died, and and even this year, so many things happened, and. The how you doing, how you feeling. And sometimes you, you're grieving, but you can't grieve because somebody who's actually grieving with you, they need you to be strong for them. So, um, yeah, some of us really don't. Like, we don't get the opportunity. And I think it causes, um, it causes a lot, it, it causes other problems. You know, whether it's the loss of a loved one, the loss of time. A loss of an opportunity where somebody steals an opportunity from you, you don't get a chance to grieve that. You know, you just move on to the next thing. And I think after a while it becomes taxing. So it's just my thoughts. Uh, like, share, subscribe, or die. Try and catch on the next one. Peace.